Aloha, Sizzillions! Welcome back to This and That in Stars. For episode 60, I am continuing with back-to-back -back movie reviews and talking about the 2011 film Judas Kiss. So I first learned about this movie back in 2019. For whatever reason, I wrote down the exact date, which was August 9th, 2019. And when I finally watched the movie, which was yesterday as of the day of filming, I watched it on the four-year anniversary of learning about the movie in the first place. So therefore, I watched it August 9th of 2023. But anyway, to be more specific, I found out about this movie through watching edits for the TV show 100. There's a crack ship called Murphy Me, which is the romantic pairing of Bellamy Blake and John Murphy. Now, in this edit, there's clearly some romantic scenes between the two guys that are not from the 100 show, so I was wondering where the heck they got these clips from. I read the caps on the video, I read the comments on the video, and that's what led me to finding this. Richard Harmon is the actor who plays Murphy in 100. He's also one of the main characters of this Judas Kiss movie, and so that's where they're able to get these clips from for their edit. If you want to watch the edit for yourself, I will link it in the description, but this is not a 100 video, so let's get back on topic and actually discuss the Judas Kiss film. This film is so confusing and shocking that I'm finding it quite difficult to do an overarching plot summary, but my best attempt of putting it into a nutshell is as follows. Failed filmmaker Zachary Wells goes back to his alma mater, Keystone University, to be a judge in their annual film festival. Now, the night before the festival, he's hanging out at a gay bar, and the guy he ends up sleeping with turns out to be Danny, a student participant in the film festival. He finds that out the next morning when Danny walked into the room. Now, there's a number of things Danny says that freaks Zach out during this first meeting, and long story short, the whole film has to do with the relationship between Danny and Zach, but also Danny in general with his love life, his friends, him making his film, blah blah blah. The movie in real life is called Judas Kiss because that's the name of the film that Danny made in the movie. Danny made Judas Kiss. So if you look up the definition for Judas Kiss, because let's be honest, I was confused by that title in the very beginning, since nobody is named Judas in this movie, Google says, according to the dictionary, an act of betrayal, especially one disguised as a gesture of friendship. And that makes total sense with this movie, once you've seen the whole plot and understand why everything that happened, happened. Let's now get into my thoughts, feelings, opinions, etc. about the film. Hopefully I don't rant and ramble for too long. I ended up taking a lot of notes as I was watching the film. They're all here written on my iPad, and I'm just going to go through them in order. The remainder of this review will be chronological from the beginning of the film to the end. Editor Sid here, hence why my clothes and location are a little bit different to the rest of the video, but it turns out that one of my clips has been deleted, so I'm here to reshoot it. This clip is during the opening credits of the film. The movie technically hasn't even started, and I'm already vibing. I'm already loving it because they're playing the iconic song Crash by Brian Lamb, the song of the movie. Ever since I first found out about this movie four years ago, I've been obsessed with the song. It's one of my favorites in my Spotify Liked, and I've also saved edits with the song. I had edits of the movie before I even watched the movie. Like, obsessed much? So in the first few scenes of the movie, we see Zach talking to a boy named Nate. I'm not sure if he's talking to, to, to Nate from like a filmmaker's standpoint, or if he's like trying to get with Nate. But my understanding of Zach is, is that he is like, I don't know, 40-something? Let's just go with that because it looks accurate. And Nate is like 20-something, maybe even a teenager. And so I'm wondering why the heck Zach is trying to get with such younger guys and not date someone his age. But as long as Zach is an adult, 18 is the latest, and the whole thing is consensual, then you can't legally come at him anyway. So he can do him if he wants. But anyway, we also see a scene with Zach and his best friend Toph, because this is how Zach gets a spot at the film festival. Toph has to go to Spain to film his movie Blood and Barcelona. He can no longer be a judge at the festival, so he wants Zach to take his place. The next scene I want to talk about is the gay bar scene that I kind of mentioned during the plot description. But anyway, we see Zach watching a guy dance on the dance floor, and eventually that guy from the dance floor will come over to him. At this point in the movie, we have not learned that dancing guy's name, but um, him and Zach will end up making out, leading to a night of sex, pretty much instantly. And I'm like, and when I watch that, I'm like, 
Where is the small talk? Where is the pleasantries? Where is the consent? I assume you have the latter, but like, please verbalize it. Nobody said anything. Nobody learned anything about each other. Like you just got into it right away instantly. And what the heck was that about? Like you need to, I don't know, do more than just that. Anyway, the next day, when, when Zach is at Keystone with the other two judges conducting interviews of the students in the festival, the guy who next walks into the room is, get this, the guy he slept with last night. So while the other two judges happen to be out of the room for a second, he says to the student that last night did not happen. This is the first time I've met you. We have to be professional about this. Last night did not happen. I think that if Ward got out, he had slept with that student, then it would be seen as cheating and unprofessional, and maybe he'd be giving edge to that guy's film of anybody else's. It's a whole long mess, so it did not happen. This is the first time I've met you. But anyway, the student proceeds to explain that I am Danny Reyes, my film is at his kiss, blah, 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 all about him that he needs to explain, and Zach is freaking the freak out by this news. And I'm wondering, why are you freaking out? Can I please have some context? Why can't he be who he says he is, what is your problem, Zach? One of the next scenes we see, Danny is now shooting a interview with Chris, who was the winner of the Student Film Festival last year. His friend Abby Park, who produced Judas Kiss with him, is helping conduct the interview. But anyway, after the interview, a fourth student, Shane Lyons, will walk into the room. First, this is the same Lyons as the name of one of the school buildings. Shane's parents are like rich Hollywood people and they must have funded a building or something. And number two, the instant awkwardness between the three guys. Like, what the heck? We are about to build an insane love triangle, the drama surrounding Danny, Shane, Chris, and especially Danny. However, if you want to get technical, you could call it a love square and include Zach from the previous night. Cutting back to Zach, we now have a scene where he's talking to Mrs. Blossom and asks for help understanding the situation. Apparently, he, Zach, is Danny Reyes, and he, Zach, made Judas Kiss 15 years ago, so the guy who says he's Danny and that he made Judas Kiss clearly is an imposter. Zach knows all about Danny's life and backstory because he is Danny. However, Blossom says, no, you're Zach, and that does give me a little bit of context as to why he freaked out. But it does lead me to think down two paths. Option one, is Zach just crazy, loopy, that kind of thing? We heard that he's been in a rehab, so is it part of that? And that's why he's gone loopy, he's got mental problems or drug problems or something? Or is it possible that Danny is genuinely a thief? Danny is stealing Zach's movie. Danny is not really Danny, he's some other name. However, if this film really was Zach's movie, wouldn't people recognize it from 15 years ago when Zach put it into the key sound festival and Zach wanted him. Like, it is possible that Danny reworked some shots or some script lines or some something to make it his own. But again, if it really is Zach's film, why is no one calling him out on it? Also, my final point, if Zach really is named Danny, why the hell is he going by Zach in the first place? So next we have Abby getting mad at Danny when he is late to meet her. The two of them are supposed to go to a party together and he's not there when he said he would be. She says, quote, what happened to after sundown? Danny tries to apologize and she says, quote, don't go all Canadian on me. And that's funny, really funny, because Richard Harmon, the actor who plays Danny, is in fact actually Canadian. Now at this party, we get the first two student kiss of the triangle or square, depends how you're thinking of it, when Danny is making out with Shane. He's taking the weird pill Shane gave him. I don't know what it is, but it's small, it's round, it's white. Anyway, Chris interrupts them to say that Shane's mom cut herself with a cheese knife and she needs help. So Shane leaves to go find his mom and tasks Chris with taking a wasted Danny back to his dorm room. And even though Shane tells Chris, quote, he's mine, it does not take long for Chris and Danny to make out before they finally walk back to the dorm. The morning after the party, when Danny wakes up, his dad is just chilling in his dorm room, sitting on the edge of the bed. He's come to visit Danny because of the mail that he's received. The agreement that Danny and his father have is that Danny's dad will pay for film school if Danny refuses to show the movie Judas Kiss. Now, if the fake Judas Kiss movie 
is any time the real one I'm watching. I was assuming that Judith, that the dad was just like, I don't know, homophobic or something. But it turns out that the Judas Kiss student film is actually about how abusive the father is. We learn later on in the movie that it's a film about what happens to Danny in his childhood after his mom passes away from her second round of having cancer. The reason the dad is mad is because of the experimented mail. One of them was a tuition bill and one of them was about the festival in which Danny's film is planning to be shown. So now we're back in the same auditorium we were in before. Danny is with the same three judges having a second interview. And one of the things he mentions is that he has an idea for another film he can make next. This film is a romance movie in an opposite world, meaning that gay is a majority and hetero is what's abnormal. Being straight is what's strange. And this totally reminded me of the BuzzFeed video, If Straight People Had to Come Out. Yet another thing I'll link below for you if you want to go watch it, I highly recommend. But honestly, whether it's a movie, a book, a show, hell, even a podcast, why would I totally consume media with this concept? Like, if this was real, it would be a great plot, a great idea. Someone please make this real. But anyway, the second thing about Danny's interview is Zach freaking the freak out on him. So Danny is answering questions about where he sees himself in the future, say for example 15 years, and one thing in particular is that he'd like to travel, specifically Italy and Spain. And yes, that is the same Spain that Toph went to in the beginning of the movie, the reason Zach is a judge in the first place. And yes, that is an important connection, and I'm not saying hey they both like Spain. No, there is literally a connection, I'm calling it out because it is important. Zach is also being really hard on Danny, being all like, what if your dreams don't work out? What if you don't get rich? What if you don't get famous? What if you don't buy the mega mansions and whatever else? He's also being very, very specific. What if you're just a writer who does the odd occasional wedding video on the sidelines? And we later learn why he was being so specific about the wedding video's example, but it's just like, bro, calm down. Don't take your aggressions out on him. Your problems are not his problems. Sometime after that interview, Danny gets a note that turns out to be from Chris, and the two boys go to the forest for a makeout session. Those neck kisses Chris on to Danny, oh my god, so cute. But anyway, they can't make out for too long because Danny has agreed to go have dinner with Shane. Shane obviously does like him, as you'll recall from the previous party scene, and you don't want to piss off the Emperor. The Emperor being Shane, he's very popular and important around the school because his parents own the building, he's lions, they're rich, blah blah blah. However, I do think, after watching this forest scene, that Danny likes Chris more than he likes Shane. It's just because of the you don't piss off the emperor quote as to why he's agreeing to keep that dinner plan. He did tell Zach in a previous scene that he can't stop thinking about him, but I mean between the three students, Danny's relationship is stronger with Chris than it is with Shane. However, I instantly start thinking that point is moot because after what I'm assuming is Danny and Shane's dinner, they totally have an aggressive sex scene. Like, why would Danny be sleeping with a guy if he didn't like him? He must clearly also like Shane, and now I'm back to not being sure which side of the triangle is stronger. When Danny goes back to his dorm room after being finished with Shane, Chris and Abby are both waiting outside to talk to him. Abby goes into the dorm and speaks first, but what I really want to tell you is from Chris's conversation. That's the part that's most important. It turns out that Chris and Shane were a dating item last year. Chris and Shane were in a relationship romantically, and it was going great until Shane dumped him because his parents thought Chris's film was too weird, too bloody, this and that. So because of the way that Shane treated Chris during their relationship and since then, he does not want Danny to be treated the same, so he's trying to warn Danny about what kind of man Shane really is. But of course, Danny is not having any of it because he does genuinely like Shane. And also, he needs Shane for, for money, for a job, for a place to live, for this, for that. He can't get it from himself, he can't get it from his dad, so he needs to get it from somewhere else. And right now, Shane is that person. 
Now, if Danny is going to continue being with Shane, Chris says, and I quote, there is no us. And it's so sad to see on his face how he looks when he leaves the dorm room. Like, he loves Danny so much. It is insane. It does make me start to wonder if I maybe misread the forest scene. I put Chris's amount of love as Danny's amount of love to say Danny liked Chris more. Because I think at this point, it's obvious that Danny likes both equally or he in fact likes Shane more because he's choosing to stay with him for the supposed stability than being with Chris, who is a much better person. So the next thing I'm going to tell you about is probably one of the biggest plot twists and reveals in all of cinematic history. I can't say it's the biggest, but it has to be one of them. Like, oh my god, my mind was blown beyond words and I can't even believe it. So before I drop the reveal, I just want to preface by saying if you asked me what genre this film is, my number one answer would have been a romance movie, specifically gay romance movie. But now that I've seen the film, if you ask me again, it's also a sci-fi movie, which is mind-boggling. The fact that this is low-key a sci-fi movie? I, what? Now the reason this movie is a sci-fi movie is that there must be a rip in the space-time continuum or time travelers or something because going way back to Zack's conversation with Miss Blossom when he said, I'm Danny, Judas Kiss is my film, turns out he wasn't lying. Zack's real name is Danny Reyes. He is Danny from the freaking future. He is 15 years older than the Danny played by Richard's character. He knows all of the stuff about Danny's life. Dad this, mom that, high school this, because it's his freaking life. What he wants is for Richard's version of Danny to be able to fix his life. He does not want that Danny to have the same mistakes and problems that he had with his life. He's begging Danny, please do not move in with Shane next semester. Please don't do that. The question during the interview about the wedding videos it really hits home deeply because he's been doing wedding videos on the side. As I said in the plot description, failed filmmaker Zach. He's failed to become rich and famous. That's why nobody at the school freaking recognizes who the hell he is. He also says that Chris is going to be the most successful graduate of their time here. But honestly, I lost my brain. You're telling me that Zach has been Danny this entire freaking movie? Like, there are two Dannys? Maybe the space time has a time rip, maybe it's time travel, I don't know, but there are two Dannys! What the actual? Also, this takes me back to the gay bargain I had mentioned. This is why they should have talked. This is why they should have had discussions about who they were. Because you literally had sex with a version of yourself. Like, imagine time traveling, finding yourself, and then sleeping with yourself. Like, I just, how did you not recognize yourself or something? I don't know. But, like, I can't even begin to process and comprehend what that had to have been like. And also, there's an old man in a lot of the scenes. An old man that's been talking to Zach, giving him advice, this, that, the other. Guess what? There's three Dannys. That's also Danny. The old man is an even older version than Zach. Like, what the actual my mind cannot put into words because I am just too shook. Like, I just... Psh, there are three Dannys this entire film. You think you're watching a romance movie about filmmakers in university. Gay filmmakers. And nope, it's a sci-fi movie. Like, what the actual? So, calming down, I now want to talk about Danny's Judas Kiss script because there were lots of references to it throughout the movie. Clearly, something was going on with it. Now, Danny and Abby know what they've done, but to me, as a viewer, it was not clear what's going on, despite Zach, the old dude, and the envelope that the old dude handed Zach. But, during the official festival, when Zodas Kiss is supposed to have been screened, it turns out that Dan wrote his script before starting a Keystone, which is against the rules, which means that his film is now ineligible to win the contest. They do actually play it because the judges stand up for him, it's a great masterpiece that deserves to be seen, but because he wrote the script before a Keystone, he cheated and therefore cannot win. Now, the way 
everyone found out that Danny had cheated is because Zach goes to visit his dad at the hotel where his dad is staying, drops off the envelope anonymously, and I'm assuming that the dad, given he hates the film in the first place, brought it to the headmaster and was like, hey, disqualify this movie. Getting Danny's Judas Kiss film disqualified from the film fest is probably what Zach wanted in the first place. If the film wins, then Danny is set up to have the same life as Zach, given that he won the film festival and now he is where he is. But if Danny doesn't win, then, he, then he's automatically on a different path in the first place, and maybe he'll still get what he wanted with the fame, the fortune, etc. Zach wants younger Danny to have a better life than middle Danny currently does. So while Danny's film is playing, he's actually not in the theater, he's left the room, and he ends up having a very serious and deep conversation with his dad. I won't go into depth on all of it about who exactly says what, but holy crap, just wow. Also, screw the dad. Like, screw him entirely. Firstly, for everything he did to his son when his son was younger, I understand you're grieving the loss of your wife, but he's also grieving the loss of his mother. He does not deserve to be treated like this from you. And number two, screw you for cutting him out the way you did at the end of the conversation. Like, honestly, I'm not surprised you would do this. It kind of tracks, given how abusive you were in the past. But, like, I hate Danny's dad, and I cannot stand him. So after the movie has finished airing, Danny is walking out with Shane to go celebrate when they bump into Chris and Abby. Chris says, quote, even when you lose, you still win. Then, trying to be the bigger people, Shane and Danny invite Chris and Abby to come celebrate with them at the party they're going to, but instead, Chris just punches Shane in the face and then walks away with Abby. That was epic. That was badass. I loved it. So we've now left Keystone entirely, and we have a scene of Zack sitting on the roof. The movie is going to end pretty much the exact same way it started, with Zack on a roof. But anyway, he closes his laptop, and Toph walks up from behind him to sit next to him. We then get Zack's line, and I quote, Christopher Wachowski, how was Spain? Christopher Wachowski. Now, I know it's Toph sitting beside him, because I recognize the actor from Toph's previous scene when he invited Zack to Keystone in the first place to take his spot. We know that it was Toph who was going to Spain because Toph said so. So to say, Chris, how was Spain, means that Chris and Toph are the same person. I literally lost my brain. Like, I have no words what in the actual. I thought we were done with plot twist. And it turns out that Zack is Danny, and there are three Dannys counting the old man. But no, we were not done. Zack, I mean, sorry, Chris and Toph are the same freaking man. What the actual? Turns out Zack and Toph are in fact dating. So number one, it was a misdirection or a lie or something along those lines to call them friends in the beginning of the movie. They didn't want to drop the reveal, even though they could have still dropped it because that changes nothing about Chris and Toph being one man. And number two, it means that Danny and Chris worked it out. He broke up with Shane, blah, 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 and is back with Chris. He worked it out. They fixed their problems. I also really love Toph's line. He says, quote, Explain your weird messages. I had nothing to do with you sleeping with yourself as a child. And I thought that was the funniest thing. Like, yes, it's Toph's fault you were at Keystone in the first place. You took his spot in the festival. But that's literally where it ends. Everything else you did was because you did it yourself. Going in to watch this film, I did not have very much that I knew or very many expectations. Like, I knew there was some dating thing going on with Shane and Chris Danny because that's what was in the edits. But that's literally all that I knew. I didn't know or expect anything else. But either way, the whole sci-fi plot twist, there are three Dannys. Toph and Chris are one man. Things along that line would never have been on the bingo card. Like, what I could tell you about this movie would never, ever have gone there, ever. I also completely understand why they had to give you a big plot twist reveal and not just tell you outright, because it would entirely change the movie. A lot of scenes would be so, so, so different for a multitude of reasons. Like, for example, the, the one I'll give 
is the whole Danny versus Shane versus Chris triangle, you would know that it was never truly a triangle. Danny was just with Shane as the stepping stone to finally getting with Chris. Chris's sadness slash madness because Danny was choosing to be with Shane over him. Well, you're clearly invalid, bro, because in the end it works out and you get him. So many scenes would have a different weight and a different meaning and a different level slash way that you understand them because now you know different things and different details. Like going on a rewatch would change a lot about the movie because you could pick up on so many things that weren't obvious before because you just didn't know. And I think two of my top favorite scenes to go back and reanalyze now that I know. Number one is that interview question. Hopefully it's clear to you now why Spain was important. And number two, every time that Zach phoned Toph was technically just Danny phoning Chris. And somehow that's so cute. Like, knowing what I know about the younger Danny and the younger Chris during the time at school, the fact that Zach is technically an older Danny phoning an older Chris, I just loved it so much. So since that's everything I think I want to say, and the video is probably more than long enough, I'm not sure for certain, we're going to now move on to my rating of the film. And the one number sticking out in my brain is to give the movie 7.5 out of 10. Now the short form of my reasons for that rating is because I really, really enjoyed the film. Oh my god, the ending had me screaming with the plot twists. But the beginning, maybe half or so, I was genuinely very, very confused. And I was starting to think, did I wait four years just to watch a crappy movie? Turns out I did not. It was definitely not overhyped. I, in fact, underhyped it. But I don't want to give it any higher because the beginning was so confusing and convoluted. I want to give the movie a high rating because I loved the reveals, the plot twists, the ending. But I can't give it too much higher of one because, like I said, the first half or so was very confusing. I literally said to myself multiple times, what the hell am I watching? It did all make sense by the end, or at least enough sense to make me happy, but it was a little bit of a struggle to get there, so giving it 7.5 is the highest that seems fair. That concludes this video on me reviewing Judas Kiss. If you enjoyed it, please drop a big one down below. Subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any of my future content. Check me out on social media, always linked in the description. I've also linked a few other things that were mentioned previously in this video. And aloha till next time.